Is it French? Um, it's Belgian, actually. That's real Brussels lace. It looks lovely on you. Doesn't it, Miss Mackenzie? Very sleek. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> no thanks to you, my girl. I don't know where your mind is, but it isn't on corsets. dance on Saturday. I'm sorry, Frank. There's got to be more to life than barn dances and corsets. Your dad might have something to say about that. He'll come round. Maybe. Mackenzie? I'm sorry, Mrs. O'Connor. 
clerk's job for a gentleman. I've got experience and good references. That's not the point. Please, talk to me, please. Please. Miss Mackenzie, I've no wish to be rude, but we'd both be wasting our time. You can bloody well say that again, and you can take your job, and you can stop it! present every structural problem known to man. You've met my brother, of course. The other Mr. Burley. Fred. Fred. Why do we suddenly need two trainees? Later, I think. And now, if you'd like to take a closer look. man from New York. A what? That's better. No. Alice here was a cutter at Madame Lucille's of Rose Bay. Miss Barton's of Mudgy. you think you can design? Mr. Burley just thought Mr. Burley is an extraordinarily generous man. Do you want to be a designer? I'd like to try. I've never... Yes. Yes, I do. Good. Then you'll both be here in the morning, ready to start. Now, I can only teach you the techniques of design, but the art... Style? That's up to you. Take me. I drink too much. I smoke too much. I drive too fast. Buy cars I can't afford. In fact, I am immoderate in everything I do, including what I expect from you. Ideals. That's what I'm talking about. Ideals. Just remember, it doesn't matter what you do in life. So long as you do it brilliantly. <laughs> He's only bringing him out in a stateroom. What happened to my piano? The man is leaving his country. That's fishy for a start. Why would you want to come here? Pioneer spirit. Out of their way of us in marketing, you know that. Bloody well afford it. We're on the bones of our ass. I'm sorry, Mary. Brilliantly, she says. I'm dying of boredom. Oh, you God, little fishers. Newton's first law of costetry. This place flesh must go somewhere. You out. Get dressed. Unless you bring good news. 
Bellic has arrived. <laughs> Medical of the century. Couldn't be helped. Doc strike in England. G'day. Theo Finch. Morning, ladies. Morning, Mr. Morning, Mr. Mr. Reader. I'm not going to be caught again. Can I double the order? A bit difficult. A lot of people waiting on it. But I've got a job lot of Australian cream satin with a tiny watermark down the middle. Theo, we could paper the walls with Australian cream satin. I have to. No delay in delivery. Only if you double the calico. You're a ripper. Mm. <laughs> See you next time. This is it. A bit drab, of course, but we can change all that. We change all this, too. Cut of paint. Bit of colour. Design room. Nina. No need to change this. promotion and i'm telling you we're gonna make unique the name of corsetry we gotta get out there and sell we got a product we're proud of we gotta tell people about it you can't discuss intimate apparel in public as if you were selling dishware oh, I know. no no he's right you can't you gotta have glamour you gotta sell them their fantasies and they sure as hell ain't dreaming about bargains of white cotton it's indecent look nothing sacred anymore moving pictures rudolph valentino the vamp? Sex ain't thinking about not canoeing up the river. Speak for yourself. And of course, some of us are more honest with ourselves than others. I'm sure you understand Americans very well, Mr. Wilde, but you might find we're a different kettle of fish. Look, honey, you do your job, I'll do mine, okay? Romance, glamour, excitement. <laughs> Simpson. Watch it, Theodore. And <laughs> um, what do you do for crust, Archibald? Well, I mean... Better watch what you say. Works for the opposition. Mason Imports? Yeah, we're like that, Mason me. <laughs> so why don't you ask him why he never delivers on time? <laughs> Come on, this is shop talk. Let's shake a leg. <laughs> that bad. Oh, a bunch of old goodies with cobwebs in their knickers. 
<laughs> Might as well be hung for sheep as a lamb. by Valentino. You got it, honey. Sort of before and after thing. That's it. It shouldn't cost too much. Oh, who cares what it costs? It's a great idea. We take a whole crowd of uglies and three weeks later... We can't do that for every woman that walks into buy a course. We'll have to have fitters in every store. One thing at a time. They're exhausting. They're gorgeous. Froth. That's all it is. Just window dressing. Max can only lead the horse to water, darling. It's up to us to make a drink. strongly about it, you ought to say so. Just come right out with it. Yeah, tell them. <laughs> Look, I get on wonderfully with everybody else. I'm very happy here. I just 
can't work with Max. You'll work with him when and where I tell you to. And you'd better get something straight, young lady. If it comes to the crunch, which it still might, you'd go. Max would stay. He's learned his business a hard way. You've still got a long way to go. I know he's a bit abrasive sometimes. Maybe you have to have been over there to understand all those people that... Energy? You want to feel inferior? Go to the States. Talent's cheap. Our genius is cheap. So... I like your hair. Excuse me, Miss Mackenzie. You've done it again, haven't you? Just have a look at what this before and after thing is going to cost. It's because I'm a woman. It's because you're a bloody idiot. My oh, darling, wine with everything. Libby, you have the common sense of a gnat. But you could be one hell of a designer. I said could. <laughs> Monsieur Fred thinks so too. You're joking. Just a little short on subtlety. <coughs> Listen, if anyone's going to give you a chance, Fred Burley will. Look at me. I've never had a style like you, though. I should hope not. You'll have style like you, you nitwit. That's what style is. Some people have genius. The rest of us? Well, we do the best we can. That's all. It doesn't matter what you do in life, so long as you do it brilliantly. brilliantly. Correct. Now, Max has style. Max? He's crass. He's boorish. He's himself. Oh, be quiet, you little wart. She's angry with me. I'm trying to wean her off smoked salmon. Yeah. Ah, more uglies? Jeez, this is a rough bunch. Really gross. I know, it's part of my charm. Ah, now this one's got potential, don't you think? Uh, maybe a touch of the vamp about her. Oh, most of that wonderful strong jaw. to be a lady. <laughs> well done, Alice. You've got three minutes.
there we are. Who said miracles can't happen? But ladies, clothes and grooming are only half the equation. In the great battle of the bulge, we are all undercover agents. foundations. Every woman can achieve the new, sleeker look that Paris dictates for the coming season. Poor things. Knock it off, will you? Look at their faces. They love it. You're lucky you're skinny, my girl. stands for. Dr. Peterson and I will be in the store for the coming week, so please come and see what Burley can do for you. And thank you for your kind attention. And I'm sure you'll all be pleased to know that sales are up nearly 12% since the show. So how about a vote of thanks for Max? It means a great future for us, and a future for Australian industry, which we're all a part of. There'll come a day when people will say, is that made in Australia? Then give me that, because that'll be the best. And I mean on Savile Row and Fifth Avenue as well. <laughs> you wait. We'll get there. Yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Don't sound so surprised. Well, it's just a long way from Brooklyn, kiddo. Shall we dance, thanks? Very generous of him, Mr. Fred. Very generous. Just a little squash and don't spy it. Last time I did that. I'm just going to touch your face. <laughs> so, how's the deal? Fine. How's Mona? Well, she's awfully easy on the eye. Well, easy anyway. It's disgraceful. There's not much of it. It's what they're all wearing in New York. We're going around naked next time. Oh, I know. Excitement. Change. Don't be such an old tortoise. <sighs> My poor squashed little booze. Mm -hmm. It's a flattener for the très chic, malnourished. Thank you, Mona. Who sent them all? Clara, from New York. What about this? It's an old rubber corselet. Exactly. They call this a wrap-on. Well, it wraps around some people. Why do you all want to look like boys? Hey, does she look like a boy to you? Like it or not, it's the coming thing. The age of youth. It's dawning. A youth range. That's it. No bony, no lacing. Just cut and fit and a lot of color. Lord, 
there's never enough time. Let Libby do it. It's time she earned a cape. It will be difficult importing colours like these greys and greens. It's trouble enough finding two shades of pink. Just a minute. We're going to rocket up the importers then, won't we? You heard the man. Hey! I'm a designer! Well? Mm -hmm. There's certainly plenty of scope. Oh, Nina, there's so much I want to do. It'll happen. Just be patient. How did you get to be so wise? <laughs> My mother. She taught me everything I know. What's she like? Totally serene. When you hugged her, you could feel all the laces of her stays, and all the bones. It's like hugging a rock. You felt that nothing could happen to you. Is she in England? She died when I was young. My brother looked after me. He was killed during the war. Oh, I'm sorry. It happens. I came out here, started a new life. That was ten years ago now. Well, to your new flat. And your new range. Oh. I wonder what I'll be doing in ten years' time. And give me your hand and I'll tell you. See you as it is. Yeah, the kids. Joy ate a snail today. You remember Joy, the one with the blonde hair? I'm sorry. Come to bed. This is a small country with a small population. We'll always be important. We don't make anything worth a damn. I'm doing all right. Well, what are you beefing about then? Import quotas? Price controls? This is a free country. I'm talking about a fair price for everyone. You blokes have had a pretty good run. You charge what you damn well like and we have to pass on the cost. So suddenly import is a dirty word, eh? 25 years I worked to get where I am. I had nothing, bloody nothing. Now, what would you know about slogging like that? Look, if you want to trade slogging stories, smarmy bastard. Such. You're talking to the wrong people. Politicians, businessmen. Who would you suggest? People who buy the things. Your ordinary average Australian. 
But what can we do, Mr. Fred? Oh, my Lord. Talk to people you know, anyone, in shops, your friends, tell them... Tell them Australian made is well made. It's promotion, kiddo, like anything else. Give it a go, eh? Every little bit helps. That's it. Max? It's not even your country. It's my future, kiddo. Good on you. And if you've got a budgie or a parrot, what are you going to teach it to say? Bye. is absurd and it's dangerous the war taught us that we have to build up our own industries we have to become self-sufficient yeah. and so ladies and gentlemen as first president of the league it gives me great pleasure to announce the great white train traveling exhibition that will exhibit what this country manufactures to every man, woman, and child in every major center. Whenever you trade, buy Australian made. That's the message we have to spread. So walk all over you. Then old Giddings comes into the room. You know,
Don't keep on at me. Because I'm working, that's why. There's plenty more. Theo, Theo, it's me, Simo, your friend, remember? Then she's been real. Funny. Now I know why. Why? Well, she's only having it off with a boss, isn't she? I suppose all he has to do is snap his fingers and they all come running. ticket to his own funeral. Might catch on. You never know. Oh, I know, mate. Because I'm going to take a personal pleasure in stopping that mug burly in his tracks. And his league. And his bloody train. Idealist order butcher. Business brothel. It came special delivery. I'm supposed to withdraw from the league. Make sure the train's cancelled.
Remember the little room in Geelong where we started? Me sewing and you doing the box. Now. Yes, Fred. Now. What was it you always used to say? That you could never be happy. Uh, unless I was taking the next logical step. That was before I put my foot in it. I don't know what the next step is. Well, we can't just cancel it. I've been working my ass off. I know, I know. If this comes out, I'll think it turned into a gigantic joke. One person will pull out, then someone else, and one empty train. Holy shit. You know what they say, throw enough mud. What hit? <laughs> That's my resignation speech. Hey, you know, I'm a pretty high speech writer. Thanks, Max. But this has got to be all my own work. Hey. Be sure and take care of Miss Libby in there, right? And Mrs. Bell. Yeah, well. I want to see Libby. Is this what you get when you play around? Play around? They had one lousy kiss. Oh, yeah, pull the other one. You're as bad as the rest. They had one lousy kiss and some rotten little worm saw them. When? Outside in his car a few nights ago. Theo, the simple truth is that she doesn't love you. But you can't hate her for that. Put your glad rags on, Alice. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm afraid that instead of my scheduled address, I have to announce to you tonight my resignation. Kenzie referred to. You must understand, Mr. Burley isn't resigning to save us from a scandal. He's resigning because the aims and the ideals of the League are far too important to be degraded by the squalid mind who thought this up. As for the accusations, well, the truth is, I... I did have crush on him, along with every other girl in the place. Anyway, one day I told him how I felt, and he was very kind when he could have made me feel pretty silly. And I kissed him. I kissed him. And someone saw us. I don't know who exactly. 
but I remember when because it only happened once. So I'm sorry I'm being so melodramatic. Just please don't punish him for my stupidity. Don't let him resign. think of tactics like this. So let's hear it for Fred Burley, champion of Australian industry. Thank you. I'm sorry. Someplace. Stop plucking, Max. Get rid of those, will you? Hey, that took some guts. You're one lucky lady, though. If it hadn't worked... I couldn't think about that. Libby, don't be alone tonight. Can we go now, please? It's your money, lady. Sorry, sport. Libby! to send the great white train on her historic journey. But before I actually cut this ribbon, it behoves me to give you a little background to the whole idea. no publicity no publicity no people no people what do you expect me to do about it whenever i'm lost in the jungle i ask a friendly native Rain. 
it. Hey, where's your, where's your two now? Oh, uh, gonna die. It's now, Bray, we won. Yes. Hope you're not as dry as Mudgy. <laughs> Allow me to offer you a little liquid refreshment in the saloon car, Your Honor. <laughs> Libby, you are beautiful. How did you do it? Uh, Frank here did most of it. Frank, this is Max. He knows the owner of the pub and... Uh... Very good of you. Very large. Libby, I owe you one. Couldn't let Fred down. Oh, sister, you really are something else. This is me saying thank you for getting me out of a jam. Not Fred. He's back in Sydney. But I'm here. I'm the one who has to wear it. And I'm saying thanks. I didn't mean I... What the hell is it with you anyway? Haven't you ever heard of being friends, goddammit? Giving each other a bit of a boost now and then? You know, all this time we've worked together, you never even offered me the time of day. Sorry. Oh, forget it. Go home, little girl. You're out of your depth. Welcome home. Harry, Another big governor? Yeah, might as well get drunk. sold a few, but the complaints. What about? About the fittings. What can I do? There's no lacing, nothing to adjust. I think that was meant to be the point. Hmm. That's all very well if you're a standard size, but if you're built like me, youth range indeed. Well, I shan't be ordering any more, and that goes for all the shops in the district. The sizing just isn't adequate. New truck? Really? Yeah. I don't know quite how to say this, Lib. I guess you know I've always been a bit sweet on you. Frank. Look, don't go confusing. You love a... I want to speak in a piece. I know you've done a few things in Sydney you shouldn't. Oh, we get to hear things up here, you know. <laughs> I'm no innocent myself. I don't care what you've done.
There's no point in throwing good money after bad. Let's face it, the range is a dud. Can we just make more sizes? On what basis? We could go on to infinity. Which is hardly economical. Well, how am I supposed to promote it? A uh, bet on Berlay. Every fifth woman a winner? Even I have a conscience hidden away somewhere. Well, howdy, ma'am. Well, well, well. That's about bloody time. I had to come back. I think there's a problem with the youth range. Oh. I think it's the sizing. Remember you taught me Newton's first law of corsetry? Displaced flesh must go somewhere? There's simply nowhere for it to go anymore. All through history, women's bodies have been deformed in the name of fashion. Isn't it time we took account of reality? Bodies first, fashion second. They won't want to know. Who? Women. Women have never been practical about fashion. They never have been and they never will be. They've never had the chance. <laughs> What do we do? So, in the nutshell, Miss Mackenzie, what is it that you want to know? What shape are Australian women? A corset woman. You are skimp, Mrs. <laughs> We've been having a few problems in design. I thought you might have some statistics on female anatomy. Yeah, yeah. But in what sense, statistics? Well, there are fat women and, and thin ones, short and tall. But in what proportions? Some have narrow hips, but large teats and bums. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. You mean the relationship? Exactly. How many women does he want to measure? Oh, five, six. My God. What will that cost? Well, the suggestion is that we donate £10,000 in shares to the university, but they'll provide all the personnel, all the equipment. And we provide the money. Mm. What do you think? Gets to do the measuring. We see some results. You cannot hurry knowledge, gentlemen. I'm not always this size, you know. Sometimes I'm bloody enormous. <laughs> Dirty sheep. Norman have his conjugal rights more often, but, and he reckons he gets seasick. <laughs> Turn and deny. My husband wouldn't know his conjugal rights if he sat on them. Oh, oh dirty sheep. <laughs> <laughs> And when everything's ready, we hire the biggest theater in town for the afternoon. What theatre? What afternoon? To do a fashion show. The new corsets. Yeah, we'll put on the biggest show Sydney has ever seen. Every woman in town will want to be there. With music and dancing. Yeah, yeah, chorus girls. The whole thing. Max, that brain is worth a fortune. Yeah. Any more ideas, I'd have to in space with another head. Uh-oh. Arthur's gonna love this. <laughs> we have taken 26 measurements of over 6,000 women. And we have found that all women, regardless of height or weight, fall into one of five categories. The swayback, the average, the hip, the short below the waist, and the abdomen types. <laughs> You're saying we can design our whole range around these five basic types? Oh, with one or two minor subdivisions, of course. 
But the good news is that of these 26 measurements, only three are vital. The bust, the waist, and the hips. We call it the type indicator. Match the bust with the hip, place the pointer, and read off the waist, and bingo! We have the figure type. <laughs> this applies to all women. Any woman who is not accounted for on this, don't sell her a corset. Send her to hospital. <laughs> So, it's okay if we have the girls come out first, and then we do the plug for the corsets, right? Right, huh? All right. One small girls, and then the tableau. Okay, ladies, laces, please. Ready? It's not right, you know. What ain't right? Bringing the girls on first. But trying to tell these women something pretty revolutionary. I'm trying to make sure they hear it. It's corsets we're selling, not chorus girls. Hey, honey, you leave the promotion to me, okay? Makes me so mad. Men are all the same. Even Theo. You are angry about us, aren't you? Alice, I'm not angry. I just hope he makes you happy. I love him. I know he'll drink too much. And he'll play around. But he'll always come back. He'll always need someone. And you're it. You've never been in love, that's your trouble. You ready? Imagine, I'm going to be Mrs. Theo Finch. <laughs> it's going well. Yes. Max has done a mighty job. Efficient as usual. Why can't you give him a little credit sometimes? If his head was any bigger, it'd burst. Hey Fred. Fred, because... why can't you two be friends? Ask Ask him. Her. We have a problem back in the work room. Oh. There's not enough of this brochet to finish a one at the 499. Oh, that's all I need. Of course. I myself am rather partial to the figured satin. It looks like an inspired choice to me, Lionel. And for the 377s as well. Oh. That's <laughs> easy. Oh. Sometimes I ask myself if it's all worth it. I think if it comes off. Cocktails at the Savoy, London Bridge. Not for me, pigeon pie. My gadding days are over. It's your turn now, Libby. Oh, and there's a whole marvellous world out there. I couldn't run a department. But not in London. Twaddle. You could do it in your sleep. And you could do it brilliantly. brilliantly. Yes. No, Mona, no. This is Radiant Woman, dear, not the lady with the lamp. Well, that's the last of them. Come on.
Jada Lace from Samarkand and far Kashmir showered at the feet of the seeker. Yet inexorably it will be proven that all this artistry will appear as nothing unless the dress be worn or the only true foundation, the true to type burly beauty garment.
I can keep my love under cover now. No, I can keep my love under cover now.